Okay, and before we begin, I'm going to cover a few housekeeping items. Um, the closed captioning link will be posted in the chat box. As I just mentioned, I am recording the session today, and you'll be sent a copy of this recording once it's processed and uploaded to the NNLM YouTube channel. All your microphones are muted to cut down on background noise. I will be taking and asking questions throughout the session, so you can type any questions or comments you have in the chat box. And please make sure you're sending to all participants. Um, I will be asking for audience input today, including asking for search suggestions and sharing back the results of a scavenger hunt. So we want to make sure your colleagues and I can see your responses. This webinar grants one MLA CE. To claim the CE, please fill out the survey that will pop up in your browser after you exit the webinar. And we will also put this in the chat box at the end of the session. So if for some reason you just don't connect with the survey today, just send me an email and I can send you the direct link. And this link will also be included in that follow-up email when I send everyone the class recording. Finally, we are gonna provide a link to the course page in the chat box now, if you would like to download the slides and resource guide as we move through today's session. So now that that is all covered, let me just say welcome. I am so glad you could all join me today for the October installment of the NNLM Health Sciences Libraries webinar series as we explore NLM drug information resources. This series is tailored specifically to health sciences librarians and it's aimed at giving you some new tools for your toolbox or sharpening up some old ones that you can use practically in your day-to-day -day work and introduce to the faculty, students, researchers, or healthcare providers that you work with. Our next installment of the series will be in December, so keep an eye out at nnlm.gov training for when that registration opens. So this series is presented by a small team of NNLM staff from several regional offices. My name is Liz Waltman, and I am with the Southeastern Atlantic Region of the Network of the National Library of Medicine, or NNLM. If we have anyone in the audience today that is new to the NNLM, we are a network of eight regions across the country that serves as the outreach and education arm for the National Library of Medicine. Each regional office puts on a number of trainings, much like the one we have today, as well as offers funding opportunities and informational materials for outreach programs that focus on expanding access to health information. If you have not already, I'd encourage you to find your regional office page and explore the other free trainings and funding opportunities that are available. So today, I'm going to be talking about using NLM resources to find drug information. First, we will spend just a few minutes exploring some different situations and audiences that you search for drug information, and then look at clinical resources, consumer resources, and finally, medical terminologies. My hope is that even if you have used a resource we will cover today, so that will include Daily Med, Medline Plus, drugs, herbs, and supplements, um, clinical info, and Rx Norm, you will learn some new tips or features that you can integrate into your work or share out with your audiences. I would also like to take this time to plug a past webinar in this series. You may notice we are not discussing LaxMed or LiverTox today. 
That's because these were covered in an excellent session back in June by my colleague Margot. She is the one dropping some links in the chat box during this hour. So if you are interested in learning more about those two resources, we're going to put a link to the class recording in the chat box. Access to trustworthy drug information is an essential component to overall health and health care. So maybe a patient missed a dose of medication and needs to learn what to do next. Clinicians, pharmacists, farm techs that are recommending new prescriptions or over-the-counter drugs need to know how it may interact with current medications. Researchers that are running large-scale studies need to navigate differing drug names when collecting and managing data. So in all of these scenarios, librarians can play an important role in ensuring the right information is connected to the right audience. So now I want to hear from you in the chat box. What are some examples of when you have searched for drug information? What audience or audiences were you wor working with? And I'll give everyone just a few moments to respond. Ooh, consumers, I saw OBGYN. Family, that's a huge one. A lot of people have to look up drug information for themselves. I see a lot of nursing students coming through. Ooh, commercial R&D and regular, regulatory departments, medical research terms, pharmacy students, adverse effects for trials. These are all great responses. Oh, someone had a new prescription. Drug interactions, absolutely. So thank you all so much for your responses. These are all really important examples of why and when we need access to drug information. And my hope is the material we cover today can act as a resource in these scenarios. And before we dive in, I want to, I'm going to open a quick poll. I'd love to see which of those resources you have used, if any, before to search for drug information. Let me find my poll. All right, so here we have Medline Plus, specifically drugs, herbs, and supplements, um, Daily Med, Clinical Info, which is hosted by HIV.gov, and then Rx Norm. And just a quick note about Rx Norm, you'll see the logo on my slide is for Rx Nav. That is the browser that allows users to access Rx Norm information online. And of course, we will be discussing that more later. Just wanted to clear that up if anyone had noticed that that logo did not say Rx Norm. All right, looks like we have a lot of Medline Plus coming in. Not surprised, that's a huge one. Not too many Rx Norm, not too many clinical info. So I'm gonna start closing the poll and you'll have now 15 seconds left to answer if you have not already. So thank you everyone for responding. Um, I'm so glad a lot of people have seen Medline Plus and used it, it's a great resource. But I'm also excited to introduce people to Daily Med, to Clinical Info, two people, and Rx Norm, and only a handful there as well. So I'm always excited to be sharing new information and resources. So I'm now Oops. Sorry, just closing my poll, getting that out of the way. So
So I'm now going to switch to live demonstrations, starting with Daily Med. If you have a second monitor, a tablet, or a smartphone, I do encourage you to follow along, maybe do some of your own searches along the way. But I'll also be asking for suggestions of search topics to demonstrate at a few points. So start thinking about what drugs you would like to see. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I am sharing Daily Med. That is what you should be viewing on your screen. You may also notice your chat panel is gone. Um, if you take your cursor, kind of give it a little wiggle up near the top of your monitor, you'll have access with the chat panel once again, and I am opening mine once again. Okay, so maintained by the National Library of Medicine, Daily Med provides the package insert information for FDA-approved drugs in a display designed to be easy to read. Package inserts are generally created for the purpose of providing physicians with information relevant to writing prescriptions, but they may also be used by consumers and others to learn about drugs. Consumer versions of the information is sometimes available via a toggle button on a record, which I will point out as we explore. But today we will focus on information targeted to healthcare providers. Daily Med has real utility for all healthcare professionals, but I think the information is especially useful for pharmacists, farm techs, or students in those programs. So here we are on the home page, and you can see we have several options for searching. Um, you can browse by drug class. You can browse the archived labels where you can search by drug or by a given date. And there's also an advanced search where you can search for more specific information. So in this advanced search is where you can search for um, criteria and more specific details such as a drug name, a drug class, you have options for active ingredient, inactive ingredient, and also any information that might fall under the drug label section within a daily med record. For today, though, I'm just going to demonstrate a simple search for the drug Zoloft, also known as sertraline hydrochloride. So I'm going to just enter that in my big search bar. Oops, if I spell it correctly, there we go. It's really thinking hard. <laughs> Let me try that again. I was getting the spinning wheel of chaos. There we go. <laughs> so because Daily Med provides information based on how a drug is sold, there will be multiple records for any particular drug. So in our Zoloft search results, you can see that there is a result line for each drug company that sells sertraline hydrochloride. Each product is identified using an NDC or National Drug Code. The NDC is highly specific. It identifies the labeler, the product, and the package size. And you will find that information on the drug's outer packaging. So right now, I am going to go into my first record here, and this is from um, Rorig.
So there is a lot of information in a daily med record. And I think it would be just completely overwhelming to explain it all. I'm going to point out a few highlights at this time just to give everyone a sense of what information is available and might be useful to your audiences. So right at the top, I mentioned those NDC codes. They are listed here. And it's important to know a drug might have several NDC codes. So I mentioned earlier that sometimes consumer information is available, and that is the case for our Zoloft record. So drug label information, I can toggle to a consumer version, but in my opinion, I will be showing a better option for this later in the session. So for the time being, I'm gonna stay in our healthcare provider record. Just below, we do have some options for saving this information. So download info via PDF or XML, medication guide, and even a nice printer-friendly version of the official drug label. And what I want to start with is highlights of prescribing in information. This is a quick overview of the most important information about a drug. It is really important to remember it's not going to include everything that's available on the page. But it's a great one-stop shop to kind of learn more about a drug or kind of get that, those good highlights. So moving down, we have indications and usages. And this is why a drug is prescribed. Excuse me, I'm just moving my chat box. It was a little in my way. Okay, so indications and usages, um, why a drug is prescribed. So in our example, Zilboff is indicated for the treatment of things like major depressive disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and a few others. Just below, um, recommended dosage and administration. And I did want to show you for Zoloft, the indication um, the recommended dosage is by indication, so you can see that major depressive disorder, MDD, has a different starting dose than PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and then that there are different starting doses based on age for pediatric patients. And this section does go into more details by indication below. So here's a really important component when you're searching for drug information, and that is contra contraindications. This is a specific situation in which a drug, procedure, or surgery should not be used because it may be harmful to the patient. So Zoloft does have a few. Just one example, um, Zoloft is contraindicated in patients taking or within 14 days of stopping MAOIs because of an increased risk of serotonin syndrome. And this is really important information to know how to locate when you are prescribing a new drug or, administ or administering a new medication. So I do have additional information here, warnings and precautions, any known adverse reactions, um, clinically significant drug interactions, use in specific populations. I do want to expand the description just to show this is where you can locate the chemical formula and the structural formula for sertraline hydrochloride. I also want to show clinical studies. This section is going to detail what clinical studies establish the efficacy of a medication. So, for example, um, major depressive disorder, the efficacy of Zoloft was established with two short-term trials and one maintenance trial in adults. 
And this section is providing additional information below. If you would like to know the length of that trial, what their dosage was, the age of the participants, and how long it lasted. And oh, just below, storage and handling, an important piece of information. I wanted to point out that in, the case, in this case, storage and handling is sorted by that NDC code. So for our Zoloft 50 milligram tablets, depending on the NDC code, you will have different tablets in a bottle. And just at the very bottom of the section, the information about temperature control and how to best store the product. And finally, I want to scroll all the way to the bottom of this list just to show ingredients and appearance. This is also arranged by NDC code, and it has a really nice tabular format that's going to go over the active and inactive ingredients, and then also the product characteristics. So in this case, I now know that this is a light green oval capsule. It is scored eight millimeters in size and is imprinted with the word Zoloft and 25 milligrams. I'm going to surf my way back up to the top. There we go. And on the left-hand side, we have a few key features. And the first is these package photos. So you have these nice, high-resolution package photos, and this is what the actual medication is going to come in, so either a box or a pill. And if you've never seen it before or never took notice to it, here is that NDC code I was talking about. So just below are photos of the drugs themselves. I do want to note, this is not available in every daily med record, but it is a fantastic resource when it is. So let me pop that open. So each image, you're going to have that NDC item code once again, um, the standard name, and then characteristics about the medication. So the shape, color, imprint. So I think this has real utility as well in a learning or teaching environment. You're able to go in and use these photos. Just a few more items on this page. That orange safety box. Um, the box warnings, that's going to connect you with any known serious or life-threatening adverse side effects. Report adverse events, that takes you directly to FDA MedWatch. Um, you can search for any FDA safety recalls for a drug. And finally, presence in breast milk, that's going to direct users to LactMed, where they can look up any effects on nursing mothers and infants. So finally, down in related resources, specifically clinical trials and PubMed. This is going to connect users directly with other sources of clinical information. So both clinicaltrials.gov, which is a database of ongoing and completed clinical studies, and PubMed, so connecting to published study results, are important sources to support evidence-based practice and research. These are both NLM resources as well, so it is great to see how the different systems are able to connect and aid users. So I did want to point out briefly that daily med is not just for humans. You can also search for animal medications, and this is great if any of you work with veterinary or vet tech programs. So up in my large search box, I'm going to toggle over to animal drugs and search for 
next guard. And this is the flea and tick medication that my dog takes. Once again, I need to learn to spell. Okay, so this pops me right into the record. And the information here is very similar to what we explored in that Zoloft human drug record. Once again, we have our NDC codes and can access information on indications, dosage and administration, adverse reactions, effectiveness, animal safety, storage information. And up in that left-hand corner once again, we have the package photos. And in fact, the second one here is the exact one I give my dog. Unfortunately, that is not my dog, Bailey. But it is great to know that if I ever, for some reason, misplace the box and I'm only left with the pill packages, I can come here and connect with the information I need to know about storage and dosage. So I'm going to turn it all over to you now. This is a little um, exploratory. I would like to know, if any, what contraindications there are for the drug Lunesta. So here, I'm going to spell it in the chat box as well. And Lunesta is a sleep aid medication. So I'm going to give you one to two minutes to search Daily Med to see if we have any contraindications for the drug Lunesta. I'm also going to take this time to get a drink and look back in the chat box to see if I missed anything. I see somebody answered their own question. <laughs> yes, it is about marketed drugs, so only those FDA on the market. So because each label is submitted by the manufacturer, can each be different in each daily med record for the same drug? In theory, yes. Um, so I have seen some records that say no contraindications, but those could be for older labels or maybe things that have been recalled. I think they do work hard to make sure all the drugs, even if they're marketed, marketed it under a different manufacturer, are kept the same. And I see some answers coming in for our Lunesta. And exactly, Lunesta is contraindicated in patients with known hypersensitivity to esopiclone and is also contraindicated to patients who have experienced complex sleep behaviors after taking Lunesta. So I am now going to move on. If you have any questions about Daily Med, um, I'm going to have time for questions at the end as well. So don't worry. We can get to them if you think of them later. But I'm going to move on to a clinic, um, a consumer resource, Medline Plus. So I know a lot of you indicated you have used Medline Plus before. And today we'll be looking at drugs herbs, and supplements, which connects consumer-level drug information to patients and caregivers. Information is available on both prescription drugs and over-the-counter medicines and includes details on things like side effects, dosage, special precautions, and more. And users can also browse for drug information by generic or brand name. So I'm going to stick with our same Zoloft example. As you probably know, you can always search Medline Plus in this large search box here up in the corner. I'm right now going to head to the Drugs and Supplements tab. Here is our A to Z list for drugs. I'm going to cruise to Z for Zoloft. Let me do a 
command find for Zoloft? Just to save us all some scrolling. And here I, ha I can see that Zoloft is sending me to the page for search relief. So each drug page is available in both English and Spanish. Um, you can always toggle back and forth with this Espanol, or it will change to English when you're on the Spanish side. And these pages include basic use instructions, side effects, interactions and contraindications, and brand, brand names. So what I really like about these pages is how the information is presented to walk patients and caregivers through questions they may have about a drug, like, why is, it, why is the medication prescribed? Why should this medicine be used? What do I do if I forget a dose? Are there any special dietary instructions I should follow? This is all the same information that we can locate within a daily med record, but it is laid out here to be really understandable and accessible by a consumer. So for example, someone is looking for information on side effects. I can select the question, what side effects can this medicine cause? It will take me directly to that section, and then I can learn about if a symptom I am experiencing could be caused by this medication, and also suggestions of when should I call my doctor. I'm headed back to drugs and supplements. And I want to go into the herbs and supplements database. So Methline Plus Herbs and Supplements allows individuals to browse an A to Z directory of dietary supplements and herbal remedies to learn about their effectiveness, useful, usual dosage, safety concerns, and any interactions. Herb and supplement pages are maintained by the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database or are linked directly from Medline Plus to the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health. I'm now going to throw it to you. Is there any particular herb or supplement you would like to see me search for? St. John's wort, I like that because it really goes hand in hand with antidepressants. So let me head to S. And I can see that this one is going to take me directly to the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health. This is going to enter a new tab. If you've never visited the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, it is a fantastic resource. It's going to give you information on common names, the Latin name, some background. Safety, so here's, here's where I said that connection with um, our Zoloft example, St. John's wort can weaken the effects of many medications, including antidepressants and birth control. So I actually want to go back into herbs and supplements right now and show you what a page directly in Medline Plus would also look like. Let me actually just go into shark cartilage since I'm right here. I, I saw some great suggestions in the chat box. All right, so much like drug information, these pages are designed once again to walk patients and caregivers through questions they may have about taking specific herbs and supplements. And one specific point I really like about these pages is that it lays out proven effectiveness. And there are references listed at the bottom so this can also be a great resource for combating misinformation. So the final thing I want to point out about Medline Plus right now, back on the drugs and supplement pages, 
So maybe someone doesn't have a specific drug in mind that they want to search for. Maybe they have a drug category. So there is this related topics box on the right-hand side, and we have things like blood thinners, dietary supplements, over-the-counter medicines. And just sticking with my theme for the day, I'm going to head into the antidepressants. So each drug topic page provides an overview of that drug category, including other names, definitions, and resources for specific populations. And if you've ever visited another Medline Plus health topic, these pages include curated links to authoritative sources of good quality health information, especially highlighting information from other national institutes of health, the CDC, and other federal resources. So for example, here I am linked to the National Institute of Mental Health, and here I'm taken to the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health as well. A final thing I like to point out on this page is clinical trials. And this is going to connect consumers to clinicaltrials.gov so that they can learn about, connect with, and see what potential trials that they can enroll in if that is something they are interested in. Okay, so. Next resource, if you have any other Medline Plus questions, pop them in the chat box. We can get to them later. I am going to sh shimmy over to clinical info. And this is a resource that can be used for both clinicians and consumers. So clinical info, hosted on HIV.gov, offers access to the latest federally approved HIV AIDS medical practice guidelines, HIV treatment and prevention, clinical trials, and other research information for healthcare providers, researchers, and people with affected by HIV AIDS. So this site offers some great resources. Um, I mentioned the glossary, the guidelines, but today I'm going to head into the drug database. And this is where consumers and clinicians can find information on FDA-approved and investigational HIV AIDS drugs. So as you can see, users can perform a simple um, keyword search, we have, we can browse by an A through Z list. And I'm just going to open this filters just to give everyone an idea of what options are available. So I have plenty of options um, within drug class, within cr condition. And you can also see I can select FDA approved drugs and also investigational. I know there was that question earlier about drugs that are still under clinical studies, and there will be information here about HIV AIDS specifically that are still investigational. So for now, I'm going to scroll down a bit to my A through Z list. I'm currently in the A's, just so everyone can see what thumbnails are used for the drugs. I would say for a majority, there is either that chemical symbol or we have that nice image of the actual pill. Um, and I am going to open the record for Adazanfir. There we are. So I did want to point out we are in the patient version. I'm just going to stick to showing the consumer information today just in the sake of time. And the, what I really want to point out first is this pronunciation guide. This makes me so excited. I have a hard time pronouncing drugs and drug information at times, 
So this is a fantastic resource to have available here. Um, I did a quick sound test yesterday, and the audio just will not come through WebEx since I'm using a headset. But if you were following along or when I send you all on that little scavenger hunt later, try it out. It's great. So other information here, I can learn any brand names, other names, what drug class it falls under. And just like on Daily Med, we have some options for drug images. Once again, they're not available on every single record, but a fantastic resource when they are. So the first thing you're going to smack into in terms of information on this page is the big green box. And this is what is most important to know about this drug. It's really comparable to the Daily Med um, kind of highlights box. It's a place to go when you're just getting started learning about a drug. You just need to grab some quick information. It's not going to include every detail, but great one-stop shop. And scrolling past my green box, the information here is laid out very much like Medline Plus. So remember, we are in the consumer version, so information is presented through questions a patient may have about taking a specific drug, such as dosage information, side effects, and storage. And I did want to point out one other um, really great tool within this drug information database, and that is the glossary. You may notice that some of these words are underlined in blue. So if I open hemophilia, that is going to bring up a glossary term for me so I can learn more about that um, medical term, that disease or condition, and all of the glossary terms also have a pronunciation guide. It just makes me very happy that we learn how to get to learn how to pronounce things. So I did mention this resource is both for clinicians and consumers. You'll see here I have op the option to look at the FDA label. I'm not going to open it now, but I will show you kind of some of the information available. So I have the highlights, indications and usage. Um, how supplied. You'll notice this is very similar to what we saw in Daily Med. It's going to go over that same type of information. And finally, we have options to print both versions of these. So I can print off the patient version or the FDA label. I want to head to the home page of Clinical Info to just say one last thing about this resource. And that is, it is an app. Um, so you can download not only the drug database, but the guidelines and the glossary as well to have access to the same information readily available on your tablet or your smartphone. And I think this is especially valuable for folks who are working in clinical environments, having that information ready to go. Will the app work offline? That's a good question. I, I tried it on my phone. I was on Wi-Fi the whole time, but I assume it would work through data. That's a great test for later time, though. So I'm actually going to pop back into my PowerPoint just a moment, because we're going to shift to medical terminologies and Rx norm. So, and before we dive into NARX norm, I think it's first important to learn about medical terminologies and why they are important. So, as we know, sharing information is hard. Meaning and context can be lost as data is transferred from one system to another. The same word or term can mean different things in different environments. And people may prefer using different words or synonyms for the same concept. So think of that great soda, pop, coke, pop debate. And this is where medical terminologies come in. 
They are a set of specialized terms that facilitate precise communication by minimizing or eliminating ambiguity. Terminologies are typically a list of biomedical concepts where each item on that list includes a unique identifier, often a code, an official or preferred name, and synonyms that can be used to refer back to the same concept. And if we have any MeSH users out there, this all might sound pretty familiar to you. So listed here are a few examples of medical terminologies. You may recognize CPT, current procedural terminology, from a hospital bill, and of course, RxNorm, which we'll, we will be reviewing today. And here's just one example of a problem that RxNorm and medical terminologies help to solve. The U.S. lacks a centralized healthcare data system. Hospitals, pharmacies, and other organizations use computer systems to record and process drug information. Because these symptoms, systems use many different sets of drug names, it can be difficult for one system to communicate with another. So Alex here, he has a bad mucus producing cough for over a week and it's getting pretty painful. And just to be absolutely clear, nothing COVID related, just that annoying, phlegmy cough that we probably have all experienced one time or another. So at their doctor, they are prescribed the drug Oberdon. The doctor tries to send an electronic prescription to Alex's pharmacy, but the doctor's system uses one name and code for the drug, and the pharmacy computer system uses another. The two systems don't recognize that the different names and codes are for the same drug, so there is a disconnect. And a solution in this case is Rx norm. Terminologies facilitate clear communication. RxNorm creates a standard human-readable drug name and a machine-readable code to clearly identify drug products for electronic communication. And you can see examples for the Overdon in that red box on my screen. RxNorm links different systems that already exist by grouping synonyms and creating crosswalks allowing computer systems to communicate drug-related information efficiently and unambiguously. So you might be thinking to yourself, that's great, but why should I as a librarian care? Well, librarians can inform and educate researchers about standardized terminology, such as RxNorm, in analyzing data sets for clinical research. So for researchers performing population-based studies of prescription drugs, um, baseline prescribing patterns across age, gender, and drug class can be analyzed faster if data is already standardized with Rx norm. Librarians can also guide and influence researchers towards using Rx norm to code medications when developing research data management plans helping make their data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. As we know, standardizing and organizing data now makes life much easier in the future. And then finally, for any of you out there doing systems work in hospitals, RxNorm can allow you to connect your pharmacy system with a clinical information system. And before I go live, I do want to share that if you're interested in RxNorm and medical terminologies, NNLM offers a free one-hour on-demand course that goes into much more detail on this topic. Um, it's a fantastic class, and the small amount of information I am presenting today is completely based on the materials in that course. So if you are interested in registering, we'll put a link to that in the chat box. So I'm going to go live once again. X out of clinical info for now. So Rx Norm contains the names of prescription drugs and many over-the-counter drugs available in the U.S. It's going to include generic and branded clinical drugs, so pharmaceutical products given to or taken by a patient with therapeutic intent, and also drug packs 
Um, so packs that contain multiple drugs or drugs designed to be administered in a specific sequence. There are a few different ways to access RxNorm information. So first, RxNorm data can be downloaded directly from the download page. Um, just note, a UMLS license may be required in some situations. So these files come in an RRF extension. Those are text files with values separated by that pipe character. And after unzipping the RX norm zip file, a text editor, such as Notepad, can be used to open and view the RX norm data. Second, you can access data through accessing program interfaces or APIs. And this allows for web-based access using pre-installed queries to make data retrieval easier. And finally, and our focus for today is RxNav. RxNav is a web application powered by the RxNorm API, and it's really the easiest and fastest way to browse RxNorm data. So I'm going to choose here RxNorm browser. Start RxNav. So by default, you'll see my search box here is going to be set to string, allowing you to do a string search of RxNorm. There are other options available for searching. So you, here we have those NDC codes we were talking about. SNOMED, if anyone is familiar with those. Um, Mesh, Drug Bank, and RxCUI. We'll come back to that in a moment. But right now, I'm going to run a search for a leave. So immediately below the search box, you can see that RxNav has exactly matched my search to an Rx more, Rx norm concept, a leave. Um, that number string in brackets is the Rx norm concept unique identifier. That is pronounced Rx. CUI, and this is the machine-readable code that points to the common meaning shared by the various source names grouped and assigned to this concept. So just a few points of interest, this upper right-hand box, it's labeled BN or brand name. You can see we currently only have one, Olive, which is highlighted in yellow as my active search term. And the rest of the boxes on this page Display information related to our search, such as dose form group, so I know that this is an oral product and a pill. Um, you're going to have branded drug pack, clinical drug component, and then ingredient in the top left. And I'm actually going to select this ingredient, nap naproxen, and you'll notice just a, when I hover over it, that number that popped up, that is the Rx CUI. So I'm going to search that. So my page has now repopulated with concepts and terms related to my new active concept, naproxen. This is highlighted in yellow as the new active search in the ingredient box. Um, some of the concepts and terms displayed for a leave are still present, as it was the active ingredient for that drug, but you will notice that the additional concepts have been added to the boxes. So for example, additional brand names and branded drugs have been added as naproxen is sold other, under other brand names besides Aleve. So Sudafed you would recognize, Walproxen. So that was a very quick overview of RxNav and RxNorm as well. And in our last five minutes, I want to send all of you on a scavenger hunt looking for drug information using the resources covered today. So what I would like you to do is I'm going to give you a drug in the chat box, 
and use any of the resources I talked about today that you think would be useful to your audiences or maybe that you have never explored um, before. So then come back into the chat box and share one piece of information you discover. So maybe an adverse side effect. You learned what the Rx CUI number was in Rx Nav. You learned how to pronounce it in clinical info. And then let us know the resource and why you think it would be um, useful to your particular audience. So Margo is putting the links to the resources in the chat box now. Thank you very much. And I'm going to send you all out searching for the drug Truvada, and I am putting that in the chat box as well, so you can grab that spelling if you like. So it really takes this time to explore a resource that maybe you haven't tried before. I know it's kind of hard to come to a webinar, learn about a resource, and find the time at a later point. Let me know um, any questions that you may have that come up while you're searching. And also let us know how you're, if you have any comments about searching a resource. So yeah, there was a question about um, Rx norm. So yes, using Rx norm, um, they would crosswalk through the Rx CUI, and so they would automatically be connected as synonyms of the same drug. So they would they would be able to talk to each other, and the patient would be able to get the information they needed. So in RxNav, we found Truvada is an oral product in a pill. Ooh, we've learned in Daily Med, it's contraindicated in individuals with unknown or positive HIV-1 status. And I see some people have stuff to jump to at, um, at the top of the hour. Feel free to jump out whenever you need. I know our schedules are all very packed <laughs> with, um, with webinars these days. Margo did just put the evaluation link in the chat box, but please keep letting me know about what you're finding about Truvada. I'll be staying on till 2 o'clock if anyone has any questions. Oh, that's a really important. Um, so Mar Maria found before taking Truvada to reduce your risk of getting HIV, you must get tested to be sure you are HIV negative. Um, I saw a question come in, will this be recorded and posted? Absolutely. Um, I will send the link to everyone once it is posted on our YouTube channel. So everyone who registered today will get a message from me saying it, the recording is ready. Oh, so from Daily Med, individuals should be tested for Hep B before they take Truvada as it can cause a severe acute exacerbation of Hep B. Oh, I love this. Somebody found the efficacy and safety of Truvada has been evaluated in three clinical trials. So we're finding a lot of different information. I see NDC codes. Um, I saw someone used RxNav. And I think it's really interesting that when you search for the same drug in different databases, even though it'll be the same information, you're going to find different things based on what you need, based on what your audience needs.
So I do want to be mindful of everyone's time today. Thank you so much for participating today and um, all the great communication in the chat box. Thank you for going along with all my searching. If you have any questions, my contact info is here on the screen. I am putting that evaluation link for you to tell us what you, we are always looking for feedback. Um, and we hope to see you at our December session of the Health Sciences Library's webinar. I will stick around for a few more minutes if anyone has any other questions. <laughs>